We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung tin dai du tang tin vi thư pha hội cập nhật thiếp chủng sanh tịnh chuyến diệu pha lưng giao đạo ngã mùng như há liệu sanh thỏa tư ly khổ là tập chứng vô sanh. Hamas the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Nam mô sanh an thu chư chế đô yê la hơi đi san miêu san phu tô chế. Nam mô ta đạt tha tô gia đa gia la ha đế tam miệu tam bồ đà tòa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come ones true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba hi chen wan che nan zao yu wo ho jin jian wen te shou chi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, O good monks and nuns and all good known advisors are made of all. Jufu Pusa, Ching Liang Ta Shi Shi Fu Shang Ren, Ge Wei Chu Chai Ren, Ge Wei Shang Chi Shi made of all. Chí Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa Thanh Lương Đại Sư Hòa Thượng Kinh Hóa, Quý Thầy Cô và Quý Vị Thiện Sư Thức A Di Đà Phật. Hello everyone, today is the 6th of November 2022. Thank you all for coming to join us in this, in this discussing discussion of the first chapter of the Apatamsaka Sutra. We continue where we left off since the last time Starting on slide 749, text, Celestial King Lord Wondrous Eyes. <laughs> You're not ready? <laughs> I thought I threw a curve. Instead of warming you up, I, pfft, let's try and get right into it. Do I sound too sleepy? Miao Mu Zhu Tian Wang. Ah, Miyamu, Okay, 750, commentary. Incredibly alluring eyes, that's what it says. Or commentary. Okay. Uh, what makes the eyes wondrous, makes the eyes alluring? Hmm? Have you ever looked into someone's eyes and say, whoa? <laughs> Huh? Wasn't it cool? Wasn't it cool? You look in some eyes. Oh! <laughs> Never happened to you before? No. Isn't it amazing how poor of a life you led? <laughs> and it's just so sad. Think about it. You know, this, this celestial king here, Lord, wondrous eyes. You look in his eyes and say, wow, it's so wonderful. 
The mind is filled with wonderful, wonderful things. Huh? Wrong? Huh? How about that? Yes, sir, number six. Trying to get some water. They say the eye is the mirror of the soul. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. That's where I'm going. Thank you. So the eyes are wondrous, are wonderful, because the soul is wonderful. We're not talking about the mind. Okay? You know, there's a movie called Beautiful Mind. Anyone remember that movie? Yeah. A great mathematician. Yeah. And he, he concocted all these wondrous principles and theories and so forth. It's so beautiful. But actually, it can only be called beautiful because beautiful falls short of wonderful, don't you think? Hmm? So what's the difference? What's the difference? Have you thought about it? Huh? <laughs> Kitchen manager. What's the difference between beautiful and wonderful? Hmm? What's the difference between good food, beautiful food versus great food? Hmm? Similar, similar, similar uh, logic. Hmm? What's the difference? Hmm? Huh? Good food and wonderful food. Beautiful is the servant of yours. Beautiful looking. Surface. Wonderful is more like you cannot see it. You can't see it. Beautiful you can see, but wonderful you cannot see. Wow, very private person. <laughs> so, so you like beautiful, you like wonderful? Of course, be- wonderful. You like beautiful, of course, she says. <laughs> No, actually, more wonderful. More wonderful. Ah, okay, okay. Just a, just a double check. Anyone else? What's, what's wonderful? Yes, sir. One. Thank you, Master. Um, I feel like the difference is in the depth. Like, beautiful um, makes you feel, like, happy. Mm-hmm. But something wonderful, something wonderful makes you feel blissful. Blissful. Blissful and happy. Wait a minute. When you have this wonderful feeling from love, does it make you happy too? Anyone have been, been fell in love and have how, how wonderful it is? <laughs> We want the truth, not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not sales uh, pitches. <laughs> yes, anyone, when you were in love and didn't it feel wonderful and you felt so happy, you denying that. See, I shut him up. <laughs> yes, sir. One. Thank you, Master. Um, I think when you, when you see the love that nowadays people believe it's love, um, it's just happiness because they are planting the seeds for future suffering. But if we, because I don't even really know like the true meaning of love, then that would be something blissful, something wonderful. You wonderful. So wait, wait a minute. He he he's he's suggesting that the whole world talks about love. Huh? And when you bring up the word love, everyone has an opinion, has something to say. Huh? He says, "Ah, oh, it's wonderful. It's great, and I can't live without it. I'm looking for it. I need more of it, and so forth." So there's no end to it. Everyone has a different opinion. Yes, uh, and that's what religion is selling, selling love. Have you thought about it? Hmm? Religion sells love. They call it spirituality. Actually, they're selling love. The ones that are most successful in selling love uh, are the ones who are, you know, who have a lot of followers. 
Hmm? Have you thought about it? Hmm? I, I'm, I'm quoting Sunday night uh, after 11, Channel 2. <laughs> well, Osteen or someone like that. Ooh. Joe Osteen, yeah, yeah. Huh? He's selling love. He's selling success. Because success breeds love. But success by itself is meaningless unless it beats love and admiration. Hmm? Don't you think? Anyone? So what's wonderful versus beautiful? Yes, Ray. Um, Master, are you um, making a correlation between beautiful and love? Yeah, I, that's a good question. I get digressed. I'm not sure where I'm going. <laughs> We're still discussing wondrous and, 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 uh, and beautiful. Why wondrous? It, it, what's fascinating to me is that you look into someone's eyes and you, found them to be, you find them to be wondrous. How could it be? Conk. Hello. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe being wonderful is more inconceivable and beautiful is more conceivable. Like mm -hmm. people have different, uh, different um, uh, personal characteristic to define beautiful, but wonderful is when something is difficult to describe because it's, yeah. So, for example, what's in Korea that's wonderful and what's in Korea that's beautiful? That's refined to Buddhist things. That's not go off on food or anything like that. Or people. Hello, Master. For example, the big temples with the beautiful uh, adornments, they're beautiful. Like they have a nice statues and uh, nice architect, they're beautiful. Okay. When you say wonderful, it's like Jewel Mountain Temple. It doesn't look like temple. <laughs> but people say it's wonderful for some reason. I don't understand. That's inconceivable. Not true. Look at the people of Jew Mountain. They, they look at each other. Did you say that? Did you say that? No, me, not me. <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> hey, Jew Mountain Temple, not Kong. You know, notice that Xinan didn't mention people at Kong at all. She only mentioned Jew Mountain Temple is wonderful, but Kong is not. Okay? Oh, good Lord. Uh, so Jew Mount Temple, say something, Xian An, you are the most senior member of Jew Mount Temple. You agree or disagree? Chega Ichenshi Kunyon Doe Otombune Nunur 
눈빛 에 눈빛에서 그, 그 아주 강렬한 칼끝에서 이게 쨍하고 빛나는 그런 눈빛을 처음 처음 그런 눈빛을 보고 아주 놀랍고 경이로움을 느낀 적이 있습니다. 그 다음에 이렇게 사람들의 눈에서 그 사람마다 고위의 성품이 많이 이렇게 드러나는 것 같습니다. 그 다음에 사랑이라는 거는 제가 예전에 한번 어떤 경험을 했는데 아가페적이기도 하고 에로스적이기도 하고 그 어떻게 말로 표현할 수 없는 그 예수님의 사랑을 한번 느낀 적이 있습니다 뭐라 형용할 수 없는 그런 것을 이렇게 느낀 적이 있었는데 그 여운이 한한달 정도 갔던 것 같습니다 Master, uh, so far in my life, I saw many people's eyes. Uh, I have seen this uh, female Buddhist. Her eyes were like a star, very clear and bright. And when I saw her eyes, I thought she's, her eyes are beautiful. Huh? 2019, I saw someone's eyes. He, this person's eyes... I felt strong and as if at the end of tip of sore, uh, very bright. And when I saw these eyes, I was surprised and wondrous. I believe eyes shows their inherent personality or characteristic. And also love, uh, it depends on my past experience. Uh, I can't explain, but there was a love that I experienced. It was Jesus' love, and that the special love lasted for one month. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the time, what happened? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm digressing, but I'm, so, I'm just too curious <laughs> to pass it up. After one month, slowly that instant, the first feeling uh, slowly dissipate. Um, and, but I cannot forget the memory when I, for one month, that experience I'd had uh, with that love. Mm, oh, <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, okay, yeah. Very good. Uh, uh, Nine has a com com comment. From Chin, wonderful has wisdom. From Canada, Daniel, beautiful semi-dimensional, wonderful multi-dimensional, wonderful goes beyond our judgment. Mm. Mm. From from Brady, something wondrous has a bit of astonishment with it. Mm. Mm. From Goat Forest Apple, if I say a wonderful temple, that's how I feel about the temple. It should include master and venerables, not just what the temple looks like. Beautiful is more specific. Mm. Mm. I see. Okay, very good. Yes. You all very interesting perspectives. Uh, very have interesting perspectives, that's for sure. Uh, it's uh, that. Wonderful uh, refers to uh, to uh, wonderful refers to the heart. 
Hmm? And that's what you all say. You feel wonders in your heart. Uh, people of the world, they don't realize it, but, uh, but uh, beautiful starts with the mind. Okay, and that's draw your attention and it grows into wonderful, I feel. Or there's a relationship. But beautiful is a mind where your mind can describe it. You know, like, she's so beautiful. Look at those lips. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, apple number two, spine number. Two. I'm going to promote you to spine number one. Because spine number one is no longer active. <laughs> She's been complaining. I've been following you all for 10 years now. How, you, how can you still call me spine number one? I said, well, the Chinese, they spend their entire lifetime. <laughs> but anyway, so you've been promoted to spine number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other one is demoted, <laughs> inactivated, <laughs> deactivated. <laughs> uh, yeah, number two. Con muốn kể một cái câu chuyện ra rất là rất là thú vị rất là hay. Tại vì con thật thật đó. Vừa rồi đó thầy con bị sốt, cứ, cứ, cứ lạnh, cứ, cứ nóng, cứ lạnh hoài vậy đó, uh -huh. sốt hết một, một tuần lễ, uh -huh. ai nào cũng nói ngồi bị cô quét hết trên đó, uh -huh. ngồi ngồi đó, ngồi không có đâu, không có cái bệnh này đâu, ngồi dám khẳng định vậy nữa đó. Uh -huh. Cái bữa đó là thật thật cái ngày cuối đó, thì cái đêm đó ngồi xuống, con xuống nghe thầy thiết pháp nè, cái thầy không biết nói cái gì đó mà tự nhiên cái sốc nó ngăn sốc quá chừng đi sốc không biết mà cái, không biết nói cái câu gì nữa mà tự nhiên về nhà đó đêm nó ngủ không được mà mình mẩy nóng quá chừng nóng hực hực luôn nóng tới không biết làm sao mà nóng nữa nó chọn không biết là, không biết là cái chuyện gì nó xảy ra cái với mình đã đã sốt rồi biết không cái tới ngày mai ủa không có gì hết trên ngày mai đó, nó không có đêm đó nó nóng sáng đêm vậy đó cái tới ngày mai cái thì tới mà không có ngủ nữa ừ. rồi cái con nghĩ à, con nghĩ ấm ức lắm bây giờ ừ. <cười> ấm ức ở trong cái tâm mình đó. rất là ấm ức mà không biết ấm ức cái gì nữa mình cũng không có biết nữa ừ. Ừ. Cái qua tới mấy ngày nay con khỏe quá chừng không có uống thuốc không có gì hết <cười> tôi nói thầy không biết không biết dùng cái pham phương pháp gì để trị ngọ trị quá ngăn nữa nè ngày xưa đó thật dịch đi có dịch không <cười> uh, master just one word I don't understand I'm uh, frustrated okay Uh, hello, Master. Uh, I would like to relate a, a story to you. It's very interesting and very good. Is because during that 40, last 40, I got a fever. Um, it just keep going hot and cold in my body. Um, therefore, everybody around me telling me that I got COVID. But however, I myself can't assure them that I don't have that COVID at all. So that day, um, the last day of 40, Um, I came to your temple, uh, listened to your uh, Dharma talk. I don't know what happened. Somehow I felt very shocked. Um, something in me, uh, for some reason, it keep re heating up and get re really hot. Then I don't know what happened. I thought it was a fever. And that night, it's still heating up in that way for the whole night. And I could not even sleep. And I got, felt very frustrated. Something in my mind that I could not take out um, and somehow after that day I become uh, healthier and I don't know what method have you done to cure my illness cure or in 
That's o- over. Okay. Đêm nó con ngọ nó nó con ngọ tức hai ba hai ba lần vậy đó. Nó lại dỗ ngọ ngọ còn nhúc nhích không? <cười> à, nó, mẹ không có sao đâu. Ừ. À, Bởi vì con sám hối với thầy đó chứ cái chuyện đó là mình nghĩ cái chuyện đó là cái cái mà không biết giải diện giải cho quản ngăn cái nghiệp nghiệp gì mà ngoại ngăn cũng cũng đang đang ấy cái ngày mai ngồi nói cho sư cô nghe ngồi than phiền quá chừng ngồi than phiền với chị cảnh cũng nghe than phiền quá chừng mà lúc trong than phiền mà ngọ À, cái này mình không có nên tham phiền đâu cái này là thầy cái, cái chị bệnh gì cho mình đó. sau đêm đó nó, nó nóng sáng đêm mà nó, nó ngủ không có được nữa đó. À, mình nghĩ cái đó là cũng có một cái một bài một bài một bài thuốc để chị chị bệnh cho quán ăn đó chị cho quán ăn một cái nghiệp gì nó mô phật để con sám hối với thầy A meeting for master that night. Uh, my son came over and shook me two or three times to see if I'm still alive and still moving. Uh, I told them that I'm okay. Uh, so, so I would like to repent to you this one. Um, uh, I don't know what have you done to resolve my issues. Um, but then the next day, I came to uh, complain with uh, the nun and complain with Gan. So, somehow today I realized that because of that night, what happened? My, the whole night is uh, heat up, and for some reason there's something in me got resolved, so therefore I would like to repent to you. Um, I should not uh, complain about this. And what did you do exactly? You had to repent? Did you curse at me? I, I heard some <laughs> having a good time somewhere. <laughs> Answer. Did you curse at me? Why do you have to do that? Không, con không có dám chữ thầy đâu đấy. Thì con nghĩ đó, chào ơi. Mình đã có một cái tâm huyết mà ở trong chùa này mà sao thầy không biết nói ngọt cái gì mà nói cái chuyện đó mà ngọt không có hiểu được nữa, nó không có nghe được mà tự nhiên cái ngọ nghĩ một cái gì, nghĩ một cái, nó, nó ngược cái đời như vậy đó. Okay. A beautiful master, I would not dare to curse at you. Um, I just thought to myself, oh my God, I put my heart into this temple for some reason. Um, I just think something distorted. When are you going to learn? What's wonderful about us is that no matter how much good we do for others, they still are ungrateful and they still bitch and complain and slander us. That's who we are. That's what we do. That's why it's called wonderful. It's totally illogical. You have, you have to, you have to move on, and 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 uh, drop the, you know, uh, drop yourself. As long as you still are preoccupied with your, yourself, they will come and attack your body and make you sick. Mua Phật và Thầy, ngày xưa đó, ngồi có đi dạng Phật Thành đó, con, con có gặp Ngài Hòa Thượng Tiên Hóa. Thì Hòa Thượng Tiên Hóa thuyết pháp rồi, cái ga, đi ga vậy đó. Cái Thầy, con cũng đi ga nữa, cái ngày đó. Ngài chạy chiếc xe, có người ta chở cái ngài đó kêu cái người tài xế đó ngưng lại, thì quả ngăn đi ngang trước mặt của sư phụ đó, thì tự nhiên có một vùng luồng gió đó rất là mát thổi ở trong thân của quả ngăn á, mà quả ngăn gì nó cũng biết nữa hà, một luồng gió thổi lại đó, sao mình mẩy mình mà nó nhẹ, 
nó mình thấy là tại vì bây giờ ngọn nghe pháp nhiều ngon, con mới biết nè là thời ngày, ngày đã thổi tiêu cái nghiệp cho cho quả ngân quả ngân mới mới như này rồi chuyến này đó thầy nói như vậy đó thầy quả ngân cũng nói trời đất ơi không biết thầy không biết chị cái 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 bệnh này là cái bệnh cái đại bệnh này nè trong quả ngân cái chuyến này là cái 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 nghiệp này nó cũng quá là nặng chứ không phải là chuyện chuyện mà không phải là ấy đâu mà tôi nói tự nhiên cái ngọn mà thức tỉnh nó nói trời thầy là cũng là có chị một cái nghiệp gì cho quả ngân nó mô phật A for master back in the day i went to city of 10000 buddha i also met with master shuenhua personally after he spoke the dharma um, he walked out he was in the uh, a car with his disciple driving him around and somehow he stopped in one place and i happened to walk by and i felt there was a breeze that low right at my body somehow i feel that very at ease and up to now when i listen to the dharma i know that my karmic retribution has been lightened up so then therefore um, at this time when master doing the same thing to me somehow i have a naturally i have a realization that master could have taken away my karmic retribution and make myself become better Let me share with all of you something that uh, that uh, I uh, talked to one of my disciples recently. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that you drawn to the Dharma because it's beautiful. Like Xianan said earlier, she says, "You go to a Korean temple; it's wonderful." It's so, I'm sorry, it's beautiful because it's so adorned. They have a, such a proud tradition of Buddhism where they adorn the temples. Yes, they make the, the most, one of the most beautiful buildings that you can find. Okay. Uh, and so it's, it, you, start, you start with beautiful, and that's important. Okay, you start with the mind being able to appreciate it, how beautiful it is. The architecture, hmm? the art, uh, a face, yes? Uh, uh. And so the mind appreciates it, okay, because, you know, we all learn aesthetics, we learn appreciate beauty through our education. Yes? That's natural. Through our life, we learn to appreciate beautiful things. Yes? And that's the same thing. The temples are beautiful. Okay? Like Sian says, beautiful. You go to a temple, it's beautiful. Yes? In Korea, in China, in Vietnam, in uh, Sri Lanka, and so forth. They make it something real be- really beautiful. But the the Avatamsaka teaching is wonderful. It goes beyond beautiful. And that's what cultivation does. That's what Mahayana does. You know, for example, Hinayana, they have beautiful, but they don't have wonderful. You know that? They're beautiful. Mahayana, Inayana is so beautiful. These teachings are so beautiful. Huh? They're so clever, so insightful, yes? But it's not wonderful. Agree or disagree? You find out, you learn. When you learn the Hinayana teachings, and then you learn Mahayana teachings, you find out there's a difference. The difference is Mahayana teaching is wonderful. Hinayana teaching is beautiful. Yes? I, I, I ask you, simply have to read. Read the, you know, uh, look up and read the Hinayana teachings in your own languages. And you see, it's beautiful teaching. It appeals to the mind. That's what the Buddha did to his disciples originally. He says, you know, I'm going to tell you about these beautiful things that you can understand. 
And he says, yeah, you're right. It's, you're right. Yeah, it's so beautiful, your teaching. But this state here, the learning, we're, what we're learning from Masha Shunhua, the, the, the Avatamsaka teaching, is a wonderful side of life, of the universe. And what's the difference? I just pointed out to my disciple. I said, beautiful. You have to start with beautiful. Everyone has to start with beautiful, I feel, for a good relationship, for a long-lasting relationship. You have to find beauty in something, in someone. Yes? A face, a hair, lips. I don't know why I keep on mentioning lips. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's some kind of obsession, clearly. <laughs> okay, snap out of it. <laughs> So, we all start with beautiful, agree or dis disagree. Huh? Typically, this is normal for our relationship. We start with something beautiful, and we're trying to build on that, on top of that, and then eventually, like Sinan says, it's nice, but then after a month, it stops being beautiful. <laughs> okay? Uh, but, but for us, those of us who are lucky, we found something beautiful, and then it's stuck. It stuck with us. It's nice. Yeah? Okay, it's wonderful. Okay? It borders on wonderful now. Okay. So, what is the difference between beautiful and wonderful? You start first with beautiful, with your mind finding it beautiful. Yes? And that's what draws you in the first place. And that's what happened to Young Sang, for example. She found Buddhism in Korea beautiful. Whether it's uh, you know the beauty of the Buddhist teaching from Master uh, Xing Yun at Fo uh, Guang Shan in uh, in uh, what's that uh, uh, that uh, uh, at uh, at uh, in Seoul? What is the name of the city again? The expensive city that I will never be able to buy a building. Huh? That, that district. Gangnam? Is it Gangnam? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad Koreans are paying attention. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, so she found it beautiful, I think. I'm speaking. I'm going on a limb now because I hope Young Sung doesn't, 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 uh, doesn't object to this. She found it beautiful. But, and she liked it. That's why she hanged around there for... 10 years, 20 years doing translations for it because he said, wow, this Buddhist teaching is beautiful. These people are beautiful. Yes? Is, is she there in, uh, at, uh, at uh, JMT? No? Is she there? No? Okay, never mind. Ignore. Let's ignore her. <laughs> okay, so what I'm telling you is that Buddhism, most people get into Buddhism because it's beautiful. Okay? And that's the approach. It's beautiful, whether it's teaching, whether it's building. Okay? And for Mahayana, we keep our people because it's wonderful not simply beautiful. That's the difference. What is the difference between beautiful and wonderful? You start with the mind, okay, beautiful, and then it grows into the heart. The mind finds it beautiful, the heart finds it wonderful. And that's a Dharma glimpse. <laughs> Don't just sit there and fall asleep. <laughs> Isn't that? Isn't that beautiful? So that's why the wondrous eyes here, uh, because his eyes reveals 
the depth of his heart. Yes, you you watch a beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful painting of the Mona Lisa. You look at a beautiful scenery. Look at a beautiful bridge, huh? Beautiful building. Yes, you appreciate it, but you keep looking at it. It ceases to become. It becomes less and less beautiful the more you look at it. Yes, it's just like what happened to Sinan. She finds that her love beautiful for the first month, and the more she, the closer she looks, so, wow, <laughs> this is not what I thought it would be. Huh? You see that beautiful fades with use, with time. Wonderful increases with use, with time, because. Your heart grows. So I ask you, this is why we're here. We're here because our heart grows. If your heart keeps on growing, you will discover more of the wonders of Mahayana, and you have wondrous eyes like this celestial king. Ah, can likes it. He said, "Wow, well, I came to the right place." <laughs> Master can sell. Yeah, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> huh? Isn't it wonderful? That's that's Mahayana right there. You know, and and I want to tell you, this is so so. so I I need you to understand this, Mashi Shinoa. This is so. It's so. It's not a coincidence to me. Okay, that our Chan Chi for this year, okay, uh, the first lecture, the first talk for the Chan Chi is a sutra lecture for some reason, and it happened to be the Avatam Avatam Saka Sutra lecture, not just any sutras, not the Six Bay Chart, not the Vajra Sutra, but it's the Avatam Saka Sutra. Okay, let me remind you. What we're learning here is because of Master Shinoa doing. If he had not lectured on the sutra, I would have not considered lecturing this. Okay, because because that's what he does. What he did for us, for all of us, we need to be grateful for. He brings wonders into our lives. And it's not appreciated enough. This is why I'm lecturing on this to remind you how how wonderful his teachings are. The Buddhist teaching is in English. I'm reminding you in English now. It was done in Chinese. It's translated into English. Now we're doing in English, our own language. Okay, and so that you discover how wonderful. The Mahayana teaching is brought to our world, to our times, and we should be very, very grateful. Trust me, it's it's priceless. This is this is what name here, the wondrous eyes here. You know that that what he's helping us understand. You know this concept here, wondrous eyes. Now you heard of it. One day your eyes will also be wondrous. Because it reflects your heart, how wonderful your heart is. This is why Young Song, no matter how much she disagrees with my disciples and myself, with the way we think, the way we talk, okay, we discuss things. But the Dharma is wonderful. That's so. You there's a conflict between the mind and the heart. Okay. And it's natural. When you cultivate, you start again with the mind, but eventually has a growth into the heart because the mind is limited. The heart isn't. If you like that, your love for your wife keeps on growing. 
if it, it, if it doesn't, something wrong with you. <laughs> Who says we don't talk about love? We don't sell love, huh? We also love self-love too in Mahayana, but a different kind of love, but the bigger love for your wife. You like? What happened to your applause sign? And you guys, <laughs> what is it with you? <laughs> yes, nine. A uh, question from Brady. If your mind changes an object from beautiful to now plain, isn't that the workings of a restless and true mind? No, no. Uh, the mind naturally, uh, as you cultivate, the mind naturally grows. Uh, the the appreciation goal grows, migrates from the mind, and then it migrates to the heart and then dwells there. And that's where it keeps on growing and growing and growing. And that's what I found about Mahayana. Mahayana is the love of my life because it keeps on growing. If I retire tomorrow, we still, I still practice Mahayana because the love will not stop growing. I just do different things, but it's the same, you know, the heart doesn't change. It keeps growing. And that's why I need you to be, to believe. Okay? Yes. That you need to allow your heart to grow. Don't, don't limit it. Your mind is the one that says, I have enough. It's not the heart. Trust me. Yes? Master, could you explain the difference between mind and heart? <sighs> mm, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, nine. Uh, from Chun, I like this teaching, but I thought... So I do I. I just made it up last uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but. But is a but. Okay, let's stop here. <laughs> Go on. But I thought everything comes from the mind. How does the heart fit into this? The same question from the Korea and from China as well. <laughs> Daniel, you take it then. You think it's funny? You take it. Teach the Korean teacher the Chinese, the Catholic way. Huh? What's the Catholic way between mind and heart? Is there such a thing in Catholicism? Yes, sir. Speak. You want to take refuge? <laughs> I bet you you don't have that distinction between mind and heart. Um, I don't know. See, he 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 ain't no. He he don't know. Yes. Spy number one. Thank you, Master, for the upgrade. Yeah. You like the bow. You're welcome. Uh, um, I was uh, thinking when you were talking about the mind. Going from beautiful to Mahayana, the heart wonderful. It was the totally rewrite of modern science because we have it. Was that the mind is emotion, so it's lower. No, no, the heart is emotion, so it's lower. You know, when women are emotional, and the mind is. Women are not emotional. Excuse me, men are emotional. Women are not. <laughs> And then the mind, the reasoning behind all this, the mind has reason is where we have science and all this good logical thinking. So we, our worldly thinking, our modern science saying, reasoning is number one, emotional is number two, is, you know, you cannot rely on that. Mm -hmm. But you just rewrote that with saying, um, 
mind the reasoning is beautiful and our heart is the wonderful Mahayana. That's what a very beautiful good. Teacher. That's very good. Now it makes sense I promoted you. Finally you were making sense. <laughs> <coughs> Go ahead, Q&A. We are brutal here. We don't, we don't mince words. We just lay it on you. <laughs> Q&A. Thank you, yes, thank you, Sufo. Uh, I'm thinking that with the mind, we are using our, we are more biased, where to when we use our heart, we are not. For example, in this life, um, I'm just saying about children, for, uh, if we use our mind and we always say, okay, it's my kid, then I'm only care for my kid. But when we use our heart, then we say, when you see all the young children, then we say, they are all kid. So we care for them and we want to nurture them and develop, uh, help them develop into the best that they can be. Thank you. Very good. Master Z. Say something. Why do you think I bring it up? M Master, I think the mind is more about thinking, about calculating. Um, the heart is it's about the feeling and the acceptance. It's not about the calculation. So that's why the heart is larger. You think that you can get where, that you could get where you are today with the mind alone? No, Master, it's with the heart more than the mind. When you got there, where you are today, was it with the mind or with the heart? With the heart, Master. And that's something a Master Shinhua disciples don't have. I teach my disciples about the heart. I don't teach them about the mind. Master Shinhua teaches them about the mind, encourages them to have PhDs and become professors and become so forth. I teach my disciples to have a bigger heart, not a bigger head, not a bigger mind, I mean. That's the difference. So he gave us something, some, exposed us something called wonderful world of Avatamsaka Sutra, okay? But he never taught his disciples how to appreciate it with their heart. This is why I'm doing this. They appreciate it with their mind, not with their heart. That's why they stuck. My disciples got there. They don't know as much. They're not as smart. They're not as, as decorated. Okay? But their hearts are bigger. That's the difference. <clears throat> yes, Daniel. Um, I have a quick question. Um, I think you, in the past you have said that uh, Buddhism is logical. So how do you connect the, between the mind and the heart? How does it work together in Buddhism? It's logical, it's starting out with, it's logical to uh, the Hinayana people. It has to appeal first to the mind because that's what someone said earlier, you have emotions and then you use your mind to keep it in check, right? Exactly, that's how it should be. It should be logical. You need to use your mind to keep your emotions in check. That's normal. Okay? Uh, and that's explained in the Shrangama Sutra. When we teach, uh, when the Buddha taught about meditation and how to become enlightened, he says, you better have a balance between heart and mind. Okay? In order for you to become enlightened, you have to be more on the mind side and less on the emotion side. Okay? That's always starting out. We're not talking about enlightenment. I'm talking about big enlightenment. Is that clear? 
So it depends on your, where you are and your emphasis. If you're starting out, you know, Buddhism is beautiful, as I said, because of the temple, because of the principle, because it's logical, because it, you know, it, it's uh, factual, okay? We have plenty of proofs, okay? We have plenty of people who says, that happened to me. Somebody said, you know, I said, I took refuge uh, last, uh, when was it, last Sunday? I don't remember anymore. Huh? Maybe two Sundays ago? Two, three Sundays ago here in the U.S. Not I'm talking in Korea. Korea is different. Here in the U.S. Okay. Something like that. And, and, and then he says, uh, I'm standing there taking refuge, and then I saw Amitama Buddha. I said, really? I invited him to come, but I never thought he would come. We're too small. <laughs> he better th- had better things to do. Hmm. Well, anyway, so he came, he stood there. Okay. Uh, so, he's, you see, wonderful things happen. That's beyond your comprehension. And we have plenty of miracles. We just don't talk about it. We don't sell it because it's too many. And we're not trying to get your money or your adoration. Okay? Uh, we have plenty already. <laughs> Our hearts are filled already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so you start with, again, this is very important for you to understand that. There's a, there's a process here where you, the mind has to find the beautiful first. Okay? And then it decides to switch the heart because that's the only way to grow beyond the confines of your limited mind. Your mind is limited. You can only find it beautiful for so much for so long. Agree? Look at that. My proof. Look at the Mona Lisa. Look at long enough there. Uh. Well, the first time is fantastic, right? The first time I saw it. And the, the, the roof. I said, wow, I've been reading about this. I saw this on the, uh, the, the books on, you know, on the photos and so forth, but it's not the same as seeing it in person, under the lights. Oh, by the way, I like to have better lighting on this. Just, just a side comment. <laughs> Why can't we have good lighting as the TV broadcasters? Yes, a... I mean, the, the TV broadcaster, you see that's so clear, so bright. Thank you, Master. Yeah, that's in the plans. You know, and it's like three-dimensional. This is flat. I, I look at my own uh, YouTube video, it's flat. It's like my face plastered on the back, on the background. So that people keep on telling me, seeing you on your face is not the same as talking to you in person. Master, I mean it. Master, speaking with you in person is wonderful. It makes you cry, right? <laughs> I don't know why people cry all the time when they talk to me. It's unnerving. You look at me and I talk a couple of minutes. <laughs> yes. We, we, we need, I don't know why. Why we can't have bad lighting? The is it because answer, YouTube limitation? The short answer is we just need to find the right structural engineer to put speed rail into the existing cement walls that's sound. But we'll have two, uh, two speed rails, I think about 30 feet back, and then we'll give you theatrical lighting. That sounds expensive. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> but if I may, Master... Um, one of your first Dharma glimpses, uh, the title is, How Big Is Your Heart? Mm, wow. Now, it's, now we're elaborating on the heart. Okay? Uh, all right. 
Yeah. Very good. And so we need to start with the mind. If you want to teach people about Mahayana, let me tell you, you need to start with the mind. Okay? They need to find it logical for them. And then, as I explained it, uh, the, as in answer to the two questions and commentaries, uh, this is, uh, what's, uh, why, do you, uh, why, uh, why do we differentiate between mind and heart? Okay? The Chinese, it's so profound as a language. The, the Chinese, there's a Chinese character seen where it means both mind and heart. And never, it really used to bother me so much until tonight. And I said, why are the Chinese so confusing, so ambiguous? Why can't they be like us, Westerners? Says, either, can you make your mind, please? Is it mind or is it heart? Right? I mean, that's who we are. We want precision. We want clarity. Right, Catholic? Do you love God or not? Yes or no? There you go. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Traitor. <laughs> okay? So, so then, then tonight I realized as I talked to my disciples, I said, instead of, instead of meditating, instead of preparing for a lecture, I was talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, and and then and, and, uh, it dawned on me why the Chinese have you seen as both mind and heart. It is so clever. That's what I just explained to you. You want to teach someone Mahayana, you have to begin, start with the mind. But you must make provisions for them to grow for the mind to the heart. If you don't, they'll be stuck in Hinayana. And if you don't do it properly, like Master Shenhua did not, okay, yeah, he did not prepare his disciples to grow from the mind to the heart. Because the heart no, will enable you, okay, to get into the avatamsaka state, not the mind. And none of them got into it because they are stuck in the mind side. And my disciples surpassed them because I saw that. I only helped them grow the heart. I didn't care for the mind. I keep on saying, down with scholars, down with <laughs> PhD programs. That's baloney, okay? Okay, it's too limited. Why do you need certification? What are you talking about? Who are you to certify us? Huh? We are the experts. You may know more words. You may have a bigger dictionary. You may have better vocabulary, okay? But you don't have as, as big as a heart as we do. And Buddhism is about your heart. It's not the mind. Hmm? You all came here because you like the logic. You like, you like because it makes sense to you. Remember? What you heard initially made sense to you. Right? Wrong? And eventually, I'm reminding you, eventually, okay, your mind can no longer limit you, limit the growth of your heart. And how do you grow your heart then? Is the question. If you stick with the scholars, with academia, they are intent upon growing your mind. Yes? And that's why I disagree, Master Shenhua. I would not encourage you to go for PhDs and get academia and get recognition for that. I say, no thanks. Not for me. Okay? So how do you make sure that you're not limited by your mind? Again, I stop you. I said, hey, don't go for PhDs. I'm never shy about it, okay? Because PhD is a waste of time. Limits your mind. 
makes you think you're smart, thinks you think you're superior, and you're not. You're so slow. You're so limited. You only see this, but this is a problem in you. You say, hey, recognize me, recognize me, I'm smart. Too slow. So how do you make sure that your heart grows? So that you have wondrous eyes. Yes, three. Uh, Master, um, we have to cultivate. You have to cultivate? Okay. And attend the Chan Chi. Attend the Chan Chi. Okay. Amen. Yes, one. Uh, we have to look for a good knowing advisor. You look for a good knowing advisor, yes. Mm -hmm. What else? Spy number one. Uh, since I'm spy number one, so I'm going to go back, go with my temple. Master, they Your back also, your temple is uh, seated 10,000 Buddhas? Well, you gave me that title, Master. Well, okay, that's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> good. My fault. So, well, you know, they. <laughs> your temple. The people She's promoting her temple here. Okay, and we're not scared. Yeah. They, they, they do have, I'm sure they are all cultivators, you know, people practicing with Master Shenhua. They do have a chanji going on like us. Yeah. And uh, so then what makes it different that we are working on our heart, they are working on the mind. Different results, my friend. You can talk all you want. I look at results. I'm American. You can be Chinese all you want. We are Americans. You can talk all you want. What have you got? Hmm? How much money have you got? Hmm? What is your level of samadhi? That's, that's talk turkey. Hmm? You think you, you're special? What is your level, you think? What is my disciples' level, you think? But I do know, I do know there's one difference. I don't care for excuses. The bottom line, okay, is where are you? Who are you? No excuses. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about who you are. Huh? And because where you are is a reflection of the method you use to get there. That's what I'm stressing tonight. I'm, what I'm reminding Master Z tonight. Okay? He got there. He himself said so. He got there because I helped him develop his heart, not his mind. I couldn't care less. So how did we develop your heart? sang -wuk. I don't know. I don't know. Jung Yin Sim, would you like to echo that? In English, it says, I second that. I'm learning, I'm teaching you a new expression. I second that. Say it. I, I, I second. I second that. Very good. <laughs> Anyone else in DTT? How do you make sure your heart grows? Yes, too. Thank you, Master. I think uh, uh, pretty purifying myself is... Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> You find yourself. Yeah, okay. Myself. Yeah. okay. Yes, one. Um, you measure your heart going to the doctor. <laughs> measure your heart going to the doctor. All of a sudden, I saw there a lot of people came to DTT. What happened? Who are those people? I can't even see who they are. I'm curious now. DTT is like not open to the public yet. Harry. <laughs> 
And then San Jose disappeared, so I can't see. Go ahead, Q&A. Uh, Thank you, Sufo. From my son, his, uh, I asked him, how do you grow your heart? And his answer is being kind to others and uh, do things for others. Think less of yourself. Kind of honor and do things for others. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, one. Thank, thank you, Master. Uh, maybe one of the method is indoor um, the leg pains when you do meditation. Endure the leg pains. Yeah, so it grows uh, for me, uh, makes more compassion towards the others. Maybe that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very good. Nine. From Zhi Hong, listen to Dharma lectures, maintain precepts and meditate, and following the good knowing advisor's instructions. Mm, okay, she, she like lump everything, you know, is bowl of wax. Yes, nine. Lyo said, by not avoiding the difficult situations, enduring the suffering, suffering constantly. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, continue. Chun said, to serve others instead of yourself. Mm, mm. Canada, Canada Daniel said, sense more, feel more, think less. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus said, to develop our heart, we must, t must take losses. Mm -hmm. Buddha said we rid ourselves of our ego. Mm -hmm. Canada Daniel said have more relationships. Just kidding. <laughs> have what relationship? <laughs> he wasn't. Uh, yes, three. I'm um, spend more time with my husband. Time with time, your husband. Mm. And spend more time with my mother. Hmm. Mm. I see. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. I think you know what you're doing, so I have no idea. <laughs> Ask Master Z. He says, I got there with the heart. And you guys are so slow. He's right there. I said, should, someone should have said, let's ask Master Z. <laughs> Accept others if they are, we don't judge them. Accept mm. all. All embracing is a word, okay? I like to use all embracing. Don't reject, don't judge, like Chan Phong. You look at Chan Phong, he's judging you immediately. He says, I don't like you. <laughs> right, Chan Phong? Only master recognizes him. Uh, go ahead, comment from JMT. Oh, oh, 제 기억이 맞다면 마스터께서 어 지난 봄에 부산 관음사에서 비카트를 개발하는 방법에 대해서 어 해침을 당하고 모욕을 당하고 그런 일들을 겪은 후에 비카트를 개발할 수 있다라고 말씀을 하셨던 기억이 납니다. Masterkeso bahasa masuk tommy pick hot to yeah oh yeah 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 so in my memory, I remember you when you went to Kwan Yin Temple, Kwan Yin Temple in Busan. You said people, um, uh, how do I say? People make you shame, and then people uh, try to hurt you, and you endure all that. That's the way to develop a big heart. 
Though resentment and depression is more likely. Yes, and I. From Brady, can you grow your heart without passion? I don't know. It's a good question. Can you grow without passion? Yeah. One. Thank you, Master. I think maybe more than passion, we can say like devotion. Mm, devotion. Mm. Okay. Okay. You got it. All of the above is how you grow your heart. It's not one method. It's all of the above. Okay. That's you're on the path, you're on the way. And look at each other. The reason I say this person is so and so is because it's for you to compare where you are versus that person. And if you think that's worthwhile, then ask. Ask that person how you got there. Hmm? What did you learn? Can I be like you? Can I steal from you? Hmm? Because what happens to people in the world is that when they have a problem, they don't know where to look. Sounds familiar? We're depressed. We don't know where to look, how to fix it. We talk and talk. People talk and talk and talk. No one could ever say, say that, hey, I got depression licked. I have a normal life now. They can't bother me anymore. We Americans are, are <laughs> we don't beat around the bush. You're so special and show me. You think you're special, prove it. Because I know you're not. Not to me. Okay? Mm. So, we should be grateful. Well, even Master Z doesn't know how he got, how he grew his heart either. You see, it takes it will take some time, and someday when it's his turn to teach, then well, he'll have to figure out how to make it happen. And then he will look back and say, oh, this is how Master treated me. This is how Master treated Heidi. This is how Master beat up on Vicky. And that's how Master ostracized Peter and so forth, you know, and, and Master Xian Jie and so forth, publicly and so forth. You know, you have a plenty of videos of my misdeeds, what I did. <laughs> and what I call, and you will be labeled under the needleway. <laughs> okay? But we should be grateful to Master Shenhua for. Uh, bringing us this, this uh, wonderful treasure of Mahayana called Avatamsaka wisdom. The world of the Avatamsaka is just wonderful. Okay. Yeah. He didn't quite teach them, teach us how to grow the heart to, to be in the, in the Avatamsaka world. That's why it gives us something to do, my generation something to do, and your generation something to do. The foundation is there. The treasure is there. 
with him. Okay, this is why part of part of the process you need to listen to the Dharma. You have to listen to the proper Dharma, or not just any Dharma. And that's why I can't stress enough how important it is for you to listen to Master Srinivas Dharma because he gives you this avatamsaka world. Okay? We're only developing you heart so that you appreciate it more. But it's there already. You need to listen to it. Okay? And don't try to understand. Just listen. That's all. That's why it's meant to be shared with everyone. Just make it available. Huh? And share with everyone. Encourage everyone to do that. There's no need to understand. Just look at around you. See how wonderful these people are. Because they open their heart. That's how they penetrate it. The Abhatamsaka states. Yes, nine. From Ruda, doesn't passion stir the mind and isn't the goal of cultivation is to still the mind? It varies, depends on who you are. Sometimes passion is not good, sometimes it's good. It's no f- fixed rule. That's called the middle way. Middle way is that sometimes you use passion, sometimes you reject passion. That's why it's called the middle way. The middle way is supposed to be able to help everyone, good or bad. When you are beginning, when you are starting out, like his disciples, stick to the good side. It's safer. You can't handle the evil side yet. Hmm? Just understand. It's understandable. Your mind can't take it. It's because he didn't lay the foundation for them to open their heart. I have the advantage of having this treasure already. That's why we study it. We listen even like the Chan Chi. Instead of them doing the Chinese side, they're doing instructional talks and talk and talk and talk. I'm exposing you to the, to the, the, the Avatam Saka world and the certain teaching world, which is part of the, of the middle way. The middle way is not the way that he taught them. Chan has to be taught from the context of certain teaching. It's not enough emphasis in his teaching. He should say, yeah, there's certain teaching, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, what's it, the other, uh, not certain teaching, what is that? Okay. Gradual teaching, thank you very much. Okay? Yes, and so, for them, it's gradual. He didn't, they don't have that he didn't expose them to the technology of certain teaching. Just casually mentioned it. Same thing with the Pure Land, Dharma Door. The Chinese only have the gradual thing. They don't, they don't have the certain teaching in the Pure Land, Dharma Door. So that's why it's not complete. For some reason, the Chinese teachers, patriarchs, decided to only stick with the gradual or non certain teaching in Pure Land Buddhism. Kind of weird. Okay, so ours will be a lot more complete. And same thing with Master Shenhua's Chan Dharma. Chan Dharma is certain teaching there, but it's not enough to help his, his, his followers develop. 
Because certain teaching, whenever you teach something that's a gradual, then you what are the results of gradual? How far does it take you? Same thing, you, t- you use certain teaching, certain training, okay? How far does it take you? Same thing the Koreans. I have a problem with someone telling me I need to do Hato. Then my first question is, how far can I go with this? Hmm? What's the farthest you've got to? That's my first reaction. Right? No one there, because the Koreans are like sheep. Okay? Very, very accommodating, very confusion. But in, in America, we, 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 are, we are brutal. We just, hey, you, you think it's great? If you think Bill and Buddhism is great, how far can I go? And you think that when I return, if you think that I should be practicing in Huato, what level can you get? What level did your master get to? What level did his disciples were brought to? We Americans that don't mince the words, we don't beat around the bush. Okay? All right. Any other questions and comments? Okay. Continue. Hmm. 751, Celestial King, wonderful banner like crowned. Miao Guan Chang Tian Wang. 752. Yeah, has a beautiful crown and they emit light. Uh, uh, that uh, that uh, light that uh, has all the colors of the uh, of the gems and in a shape of a banner. Uh, so uh, so uh, he he uh, he's actually uh, pretty pretty uh, haughty. He says, "I my crown is uh, me. I am the king. Hmm? Don't forget it." Huh? If you have any doubt, try me. I will cut your head off. That's why you, when you have, you have doubts about the king, you know what they do? If I were king, I'd kill you. There's no sense in wasting time. Okay? So, this guy is pretty pompous. Don't mess with him, okay? You're asking for trouble. When he says, I'm a no, don't you hear, don't you understand my name? Wonderful, better like crown, meaning I am it. <laughs> uh, 753, Celestial King, Courageous Wisdom. Ah, 754, he says, I'm known to be Courageous Wisdom, meaning that Nothing scares me. I'm undaunted. And you know what? When I have a problem, you come and challenge me, and I have enough wisdom to beat the heck out of you. You're going to be sorry. You try to oppose me. You try to get in my way. I will crush you. And that's what he says. Not me, okay? <laughs> I'm just a wimp. I just talk, 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 talk. Huh? Okay. 755. Celestial King phrases the sublime sounds. Mm. 756. Uh, these people are wonderful. He has, you know, that, that voice is so sublime. And, and, uh, and phrases, uh, the phrases, so he knows how to use words. He's a great salesman. Xin An has got so much, so, so far to go. Xin An, she's proud of herself as I'm a good saleswoman, but her phrases are not sublime yet. Xin An, what you have, have you got to say for yourself? Uh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm trying to train myself to be better. <laughs> see, you see, you see, you see, I, I, I rest my case. She thinks of herself as a great salesman. <laughs> she acknowledged it, but not great yet, not the greatest yet. Okay. So, so this, this king here, when he teaches his disciples, his, his people, you have to understand, you become a king, a celestial king, for your ability to take care of your subjects. We are not talking about human realms, folks. Human realms, you become Republican, I, I mean, uh, you have a political, political affiliation, and because your, part, your political party bosses uh, enraptured you, okay, in nonsense, whether it's Democrat, Republican, independent, and stuff like that, it's all politics, okay? If you don't know that, grow up, okay? They all have self interests, they're all driven by self interests, okay? Yeah. It doesn't matter how, how uh, wonderful they sound, how, how eloquent they are. And they're plenty of eloquent. Yeah, even though I listen to people like Ted Cruz, I don't know. I don't know how people could have elected Ted Cruz as, as their representative. I would never vote for him. He's a cheap con man. I'm, we're lucky in this country. It's called something called freedom of speech. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm free to. Uh, it's okay to criticize others and expect to be criticized as well in return. Okay, so anyway, he's such a little con man. When I listen to him, I can't stand the guy because he's he he flip flops and he's no principle. He says whatever, says anything, just to get away with it. Okay, and I don't know how the people could possibly vote for him. I'd rather become, I'd rather move to Russia first <laughs> and become a Russian citizen first <laughs> than vote for him. If you put a gun to my head, I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Never mind, it's just in my strong personal opinion, okay? It has nothing, it's not sublime sounds by any means, okay? It goes to prove, okay? My point being that if you're a king, celestial king, okay? Your job is to take care of your subjects, not yourself. These, they're called celestial kings because they're there, because they are doing a very important job. I'm reminding our politicians as well. Make yourself worthy. Okay? You're there because there's a job. You have some responsibilities that weigh very heavily on your shoulders. So this king here, he says, I take it upon myself to teach my subjects. And that's why I have to develop these phrases of sublime sounds to guide them, to encourage them, to teach them. It's not a casual thing for him at all, the celestial king. It's in his heart, he says, I want to know how to motivate my, my subjects. So that's how he developed this, 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 these sublime sayings. See that? I just, I mean, you just, I just taught you another aspect of how to grow your heart, the desire to help others, the responsibility you take it seriously. It's not about becoming more famous, getting reelected. It's about helping others. You know, like I saw a politician like Liz Cheney, for example. She paid a dear price for her political career. Okay? 
But that's what they're supposed to do, for God's sake. Hey, Daniel, say hello to your boss for me. Okay? We're there. With that in that position, a senator, a congressman, because we have to serve our people, not ourselves. That's how your heart grows. It's never for ourselves. The people first. And that's what his king does. Because once you're a king, think about it. Why do you need to have sublime sounds? I'm the king. I don't care. I don't get reelected. Remember? I'm the king by birthright, by blood. I'm entitled to being a king. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. What are you going to do? Huh? You don't like it? Cut your head off. Right? Seven fifty seven Celestial King Banner of Splendid Light. Miao Guang Chang Tian Wang. Hmm. Seven fifty eight. Uh, so the light he emits resembles the jewel banner. Okay. It's there. It says I emit light. I dare you, dark forces, to come near me and try to confuse my, dis my subjects. Okay, you, dark forces, are afraid of light. I'm shedding light upon all my, dis uh, my, my uh, subjects to protect them, to guide them. Hmm? 759, Celestial King, gate to the realm of quiescence. Hmm. What is, what is it does he do, you think? Chan Chi, I think. <laughs> huh? Chan Chi is a gate to the realm of quiescence. I know you only come out at night. <laughs> During the day here at Wei Mountain Temple, I saw two souls. Sitting here with me at four in the morning. At three, no one is up. Uh, lucky for me, there's a daylight savings time. So I have one additional hour of sleep last night. So I was up until two, and then I said, oh, my alarm goes up at 2.30. Lucky for me, that's us, you know, <laughs> one additional hour of sleep. Uh, that's why I'm perky today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, I'm not quiet. <laughs> so, uh, and so, and so he says, he says, uh, gate the realm quest. And you know what he does actually? Uh, he instills uh, quietness, quiescence in people's minds. It's the state of mind he has that when his subjects are near him, okay, their minds quiet down. So the gate is through him. You understand? These names have very have have, have different secrets. What he says is that follow me, come near me. You experience quiescence. Okay, and quiescence means that you be unmoving. Okay, you be not be disturbed by Goin's crying and complaints. I, I don't know why you're always like that. <laughs> okay, 761, Celestial King, banner embellished with wonderful wheels. 
Miao Lun Zhuang Yan Chuang Tian Wang. Hmm. So he has a he has a, this uh, um, banner, jewel banner here that has uh, many wonderful wheel looking types of adornments. Ah, uh, he uh, says, um, I speak wonderful Dharma. Hmm? He says, I speak the Dharma to my subjects. My instructions are like Dharma. I tell them hmm, what I, my royal edicts are like, the Dharma. Hmm? Wouldn't that be cool to have a king like that or have a senator like that here in the United States? Okay, 763, celestial king, ease and comfort of flower bud wisdom. Hmm, okay. Here, this particular king here. Uh, uh, he says, Hui, uh, okay. Uh, he says, uh, wisdom like lotus buds. Uh, he says, the wisdom that I am helping you, I'm teaching you, and helping you develop will be as beautiful as a bud of flower. Okay? What you see there is beautiful, very enticing, but it is even more beautiful when it blooms. So is your wisdom. Wisdom is beautiful, yes, but uh, it's nothing yet. You haven't seen nothing yet. Okay? Continue. I will help you develop so that it blooms, so that it becomes wonderful. Mm. Okay? And, and, uh, and also he's, uh, he's uh, very at ease. He's at ease everywhere. Yes, nine. From DTT Ray, does framing one's intent help one to grow their heart? For example, when eating, we think I'm eating for the purpose of others to survive so that those who care about me will be happy. T and T. Too much thinking. Okay, don't think, eat, enjoy the food. Don't say, I'm enjoying this for others. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Can you just enjoy the food? <laughs> huh? Don't, don't try. So, well, we go, listen, folks, please get this straight. Cultivation. Unlike the Hinayana who stress mindfulness crap. Okay? That I, to the point where you chew, you need to realize you chew the 24th time now, and you stop next at the 25th and swallow. That's not the middle way. Okay? The middle way is that sometimes you chew only once and swallow like a dog. Yeah. So, don't think so much. Okay, it's okay to be human. It's okay to be fragile. It's okay to be stupid. Okay, that's a middle way. Okay, it's okay to be passionate. And when the time comes, we can be dispassionate. We can be bright. But until then, it's okay to be stupid. Is that clear? You're not something like an idol. that everyone has to look up to. That's not real. You know what I mean? 
doesn't matter how wonderful, how handsome you are, beautiful you are, you still need to eventually have to take a shower and wash your hair. Okay? So don't try so hard. All we're doing is that we all agree among ourselves. Let's go in that direction. You know, let's go and be who we can be. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay? And if Sintong refuses to turn on the lights in a dining hall, let's forgive her. Let's not poison her. <laughs> and if you trip and fall on your face, don't sue master because Sintong didn't turn on the lights. Yeah, 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 that's why. So you don't turn it off. Uh, yes, eight. Thank you, Master. Uh, in, in Venerable Shentong's defense, um, the, the white lady who was at Temple has left, so she says she only turns on the lights when, the, when there's a white lady in the... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so it's okay to relax, okay? Uh, don't be so obsessed that even, that's what I'm trying to teach you the middle way here in that, you know, like uh, Master Xuanhua, I remember going to his, his uh, Fo Qi and Wan Yin Qi and everyone told me, I need to go to bed, I need to become enlightened. I cannot waste my time. I say, oh, please, you're wasting time. <laughs> don't try so hard. Just because you don't, you, you, you don't try to waste time, you're wasting time already. That's not the middle way. And so that's what Master Shiva taught my generation, but we didn't get it. He taught my generation, he said, there's a middle way here. I'm teaching you here is that, but there's a middle way here. And that's why I'm teaching you. Because you told me about it. You told us about it. And I'm the only one who talks about it. The others, they hide in his shadow. Say, oh, this is Master So come support me because I'm descendant of Master Shenhua. I don't care for that. Don't support me. Don't bother me. I'm talking about the middle way my teacher taught. Because that's why he said, I'm teaching you the middle way. It's there. It's built in, in all his teaching. It's the middle way there. Understand spy number one? You go back to your boss and tell them that I'm learning. You, you're hearing about, you're learning about the middle way here. <laughs> 765. If I sound bitter, it is true. I'm bitter. That's a middle way. <laughs> so don't try so hard, folks. Try your best. Try and try and try until you fail. Then take a break and come back and try again. You're supposed to fail. Let me tell you, you're not supposed to be able to handle it. That's why it's called training. You look at all the, you know, the uh, SEAL 6 training or the Marines. Well, it's not quite the Marines, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, you know, they, yeah, but they don't realize that or they, they're getting pushed to the limit and see whether you're going to quit or not. Of course, the weak ones should, should have no business being there. It's called natural law selection. But the, but the one who has potential, okay? 
can only nurt be nurtured if they don't quit. Do you get it? Huh? So don't try so hard. I, I, I must you know, I, I must be mindful. I must, I must become aligned. I must not waste time. Seriously? Are you kidding yourself? You only you can you can you can do so much. You can do so much pain. You can concentrate so much. That's all you got. Give you all. That's all I'm asking you. When you train your muscles to pump up your chest for whatever reasons, I don't know why you want to pump up your chest. <laughs> okay? How do we train you? To the point of failure. That's how you build muscles by pushing yourself to the limit. And then you say, <laughs> and you pass out. So you can't tell me that you, have, you can do it 24 hours a day. No one can. So what's this nonsense about? I must be, you know, I must go, I must see. That's Hinayana crap. We don't do that. Master Z is used to sleep all the time. By now, I would look at his screen and in Zhu Kong, he'd be you know, leaning forward <laughs> for half an hour. And no one dare say anything, including me. <laughs> That's his best. You got that? Be yourself. Try your best. That's all you got. Yes, eight. Thank you, Master. I would like to express my, my sincere gratitude to Great Master Shenhua uh, for teaching about the middle way and also to you for reinforcing the importance of it. I find in so many situations uh, just, the, just the talking point, the middle way, can put people at ease and help solve problems. It is just tremendous wisdom as a concept, and I'm so thankful for you speaking about it. Of course. <laughs> 765. And celestial king, power Indra's wonderfully adorned brightness. In Tolo Li Miao Chong Yang Guang Ming Tian Wang. Now, all of a sudden, we are praising Catholic Daniel's boss. Hey, Daniel, go back and tell your boss, huh? Hey, we are embracing you as well. <laughs> you poor Christian guy, Catholic guy. Uh, uh, so, this guy here, uh, He's bringing up that Indra or the Christian God. He's a king of the second desire heaven where we are. Uh, and he, uh, he has uh, king power interest. Yin tu luo li. So Indra's Okay, he has what he's referring to here is that Indra is a lord in our realm, per desire realm, where he's well respected. Okay, he has the authority in our world. So Li here is is a chuan Li, not just power, but power and influence, because Indra uh, or the Christian God or the Catholic God is, has a lot of influence. Look, we are, we are the beneficiaries of his power and influence. This church here was erected, was created in his honor. So like it or not, we must be grateful for that. Without that, we would not have this church. 
we will not be able to speak this wonderful Dharma. Yes, A. Uh, th thank you, Master. I don't want to presume, but could you clarify then who Indra is? Indra is the, uh, the, uh, the what uh, Daniel calls uh, God. Okay. And they, he's the king uh, in our realm here. Desire, uh, desire realm have six layers of heavens. We are the human realm. Above us is the four heavenly kings heaven, which is halfway of the Su, Su, uh, uh, Sumeru, Mount Sumeru. And on top of Mount Sumeru is the second desire heaven. That's where Indra resides. He's a king of the particular heaven. He's very influential. He's very powerful. He rules over our human realm. So he has Chen Li. He has power and influence over our human activities, like it or not. You can deny it all you want, okay? Very much like you can deny that the President of the United States uh, has no power over you. Oh, no. He passes laws. He has a lot of power over us, okay? So same thing with Indra. Indra has, is in, tremendously uh, powerful and influential in our world. Okay. Yes, one. Thank you, Master. Um, I think Peter knows him as Emperor Jade. Yeah, em Jade Emperor, as the uh, Taoists call him, as Jade Emperor. Okay. Uh, and he's, he's, uh, they worship him as well. Yes. All right, and so he has the power and influence of Indra in our world, meaning that his words are well respected, but also he has some, uh, a lot of wonderful adornments and uh, light. Okay. All right, 767. These and others acted as leaders of innumerable kings of the heavens of mastery over others' transformation. And so we, the, the sutra here, this version, a short version of the Avatamsaka Sutra only listed 10 of these names. Uh, of these uh, leaders, actually there are uh, innumerable other kings of the heavens, of this particular heaven in the desire realm. Um, 769, and they all cultivated, all diligently cultivated the vast great Dhamma door of unconstrained, skillful means. Mm, yeah, so I disagree with uh, with uh, with the translation a little bit. It's not a big deal, but uh, so I don't know about you, but when I hear about these kings and why they're there, I just wonder how they got there. Okay, just the same. That's why I can, I told I brag about Master Z, and that's why I'm hoping one day he'll understand how he got there. That's when he can begin to teach others. Okay. Yeah. But if, if he's, he doesn't see it, that, then you guys can spy on him and see what he does besides sleeping. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, so what, do these, how, what did these, these uh, kings do? Okay. And what are they still doing? Uh, diligent is a key word in Mahayana. At the end, of the evening during uh, during the uh, the uh, uh, the evening uh, lectures, we read this universal worthy verses of exhortation. Okay, and he, every single night we remind ourselves to be diligent. Okay, so this is a common thread for all these these. King, heavenly kings, they diligently cultivate it. They're cultivating diligently. Okay? 
the vast great Dharma door, Da Fa Meng, Huang Da. So the vast great, vast is meaning it's a lot of things, and great is wonderful, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, tremendously impressive, okay? Uh, so vast meaning high in numbers, great meaning very impressive, imposing. Dharma door of unconstrained, skillful means. Um, no. Hmm. There's no such a thing as unconstrained, skillful means. It sounds like anarchy. If you have skillful means that's unconstrained, it's stupidity, it's not wisdom. Okay? It means here, Dhamma door of self-mastery and skillful means. Change it, because this translation sucks. Of course, you can't blame them. These are Hinayana, Mahayana people. They don't know what they're talking about. They're not there yet. Yes, eight. Thank you, Master. Uh, I, I don't speak Chinese, but I, I am curious why the Chinese could be translated as either unconstrained or self-mastery. They seem like opposites in English. Um, yeah, and they're trying, they're overreaching. And the Chinese, the original Chinese character here, Zhu Zai here, is a very special meaning in Mahayana. It's only a Mahayana state. That's why these people don't understand. There's a Hinayana. At, at best, Hinayana, Mahayana. That's why they don't have the concept of Zhu Zai yet. Nailed. All of them, none of them has understand that. Okay, that's why the translation when I get to the two side, that's why I, I immediately said, hmm, let me see if they understand it. No, they haven't got it yet. Okay. Mm. To be unconstrained, skillful means is, is total nonsense. Okay. Uh, the Dharma door is that mm, you practice a lot of expedience to help save others. It's nothing that you would not do in order to save others, okay? And in doing a lot of those things, you're not afflicted at all. Okay, so you're not afflicted. They come and insult you. They come and try to hurt you, harm you. You are not afflicted. You find ways to help them. Okay, so the key here is that you cannot claim you're helping others unless you are not afflicted. See how beautiful the name is, it means. People of the world says, I want to help you. Huh? I want to help you. I love you. I love you unconditionally. I want to make you happy. Yes, sounds familiar, but they're afflicted already. <laughs> That's why I don't believe those people who say, I love you unconditionally. You are scheming when you say that to me. How can I possibly believe you? When you say, I love you unconditionally. It's like a qualifier, you know? If you love, why do you have to be unconditional? Meaning that sometimes you love others conditionally? And how do I make sure that I'm one of those who are unconditionally loved by you? You see, it poses problems immediately. Huh? And, and those 
losers out there I keep on saying, I love, love is unconditional. I just saw some comment on Facebook or on, on t- Twitter or something recently. Unconditional love is a rule. So, you cannot help others. You cannot love others. You cannot do for others unless your head is clear. Okay? Yeah. Your body is sick. Yes? Who's not sick? Please tell me. Daniel, you have no sicknesses, clearly. Huh? The Lord will take care of everything. Right? In our side, the Buddha says, ha, tough luck, kid. <laughs> you, you are SOL. <laughs> okay, you have this body, tough luck. What are you going to do? Okay? So, how can you tell me that, that, that you're not afflicted? Your, your body is sick, you know, you can't move, you know, it hurts here, hurts there. I talked to my disciple, and she said, I don't know why, but I'm sleeping too much. I, I think it's from the Korea trip. <laughs> or it's from the Korea phase. I said, my God. Yeah? So, so you cannot help being sick, you can help being short and all those things, but you're not afflicted. That's how you have the wisdom to deploy expedient, your know, skill in means to help others. Okay, this is the same. No, you cannot convince her otherwise. She wants to help me. Okay. But as soon as she gets afflicted over someone wasting water and electricity, what happens? She's no longer helping me and try to convince her that. When you lose, you're cool. You have no more self-mastery. You can't do much. You can't help. Does it make sense? Yeah, it doesn't matter how well-intentioned you are. It doesn't matter how many tricks you have up your sleeves. But if you're afflicted, you can't help. Is that clear? That's why self-mastery or at ease has to come first before you can apply your tricks or your magic. Okay, we stop here tonight. Huh? And next we go into 771. Thank you, everyone. Good night.